Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to actually pick up from our last video for where we actually built our people UI. Now one thing that I mentioned in the last video was that we actually built out a people view UI and it's great because it looks like you know exactly what our design looks like but one thing that you'll realize is that our view code here in our Swift UI view is quite long and very difficult to read like if I was to open up this file I wouldn't be able to tell instantly what part relates to what in our Swift UI preview so in this video what we're going to do is look at how we can actually refactor our views into components so that they're more maintainable reusable and readable within our Swift UI code so the first thing that I actually want to do is actually move our views into some computed properties. So what are these views? Well, in my opinion, views should live in computed properties where they're only local to the scope of that view. So let's say, for example, if you have a view that's only specific to this view, then it makes sense to move it out to a computer property so that you can just easily see what that is. Now, the first one I'm actually going to tackle is our toolbar item button here. So let's actually just scroll down and underneath our Swift UI preview code here, we're just going to write an extension on people view. And then within here, we're just going to type out the view that we're going to hold our toolbar item in. So let's just type this out and then I'll break it down. Right now, we just created a computer property called create and we're just saying that's going to return some kind of view. Now, the reason why I've actually called this create is because we want these views to be as descriptive as possible in terms of what they do. And when you actually tap this plus button, you're actually going to create a new user. So that's why I've named this create. So within this view, what we're going to do is actually move our button code within our toolbar within this computer property. So let's just copy this button here. I should say cut it. And I'm just going to paste it within here like so. So now, if we want to use this button that is used to create a user, all we need to do is within here, just type out create. So looking at this at a glance, I can now see that when I look at this toolbar item, this is the create button that you see in the designs, and it's all organized within this private extension here, like so. So the next one that we're actually going to move out is our background. So if you actually go up, you'll see that we have this theme dot background color. So instead of actually having it here like so, let's create another computer property and we'll just call it background. So now we have our background and we also have our background computer property. And if you just run this in the Swift UI preview, you'll notice that everything looks and works the exact same way. So nothing is actually, you know, broken. Cool. So now that we have our views and they look a bit less cluttered in terms of, you know, these views here, you'll notice that we actually have a bit of a beast here in terms of this for each and these cell items. So this actually takes up a lot of space within our Swift UI code. So what we actually want to do for this one is because this view actually appears in multiple places, so it's actually a cell item within some kind of like, you know, list or grid of items. We actually want to extract this view out into its own Swift UI view. So we don't actually want this to be a computer property like our other examples like so and we also don't want to create something like a function where it returns some kind of view like this so let's say it was like create item we don't want it to be a function as well where it's something like this because we want to be able to preview this view when we're actually building laying it out so what we want to do is just isolate that view within some kind of swift ui view so let's create a new swift ui view called person item view and we'll just create it within our views folder here like so so you'll notice as well, in my opinion, whenever I'm creating views, whenever I extract them out, I always make sure that they end in view. But if it's a computed property, I'll just give it the name in terms of what it actually is. Now that we have our person item view, if you go back into our people view, you'll notice that we were actually passing in a item so we can actually just show the number for our for each. So in our person item view, let's just create a property here called user and we'll just temporarily for now make it an integer. Okay, cool. So now we should get an error in our Swift UI preview and that's fine. So for here, just type out zero just to fill it with something, which is cool. So one thing to note as well with this is that I've not made this a binding or a var. The reason why it's a constant is because we just want this view to reflect the data that you pass in. You don't want someone to be able to change it 
or mutate it. So making a constant allows us to do just that. So now what we want to do is actually copy all of our UI code from within our grid. So all of this V stack, we want to just copy, well, not copy, but we want to cut all of this. So everything in a for each, cut it. And then now we actually just want to paste it within here like so. Cool. And then now we should get an error here because you know we don't have a concept of item anymore. So we're just going to call this user like so. And then if you just run your Swift UI preview, you should now see that you see your item view in here. Now it's worth noting that this actually spans the entire screen because you know it's um, got a width of like infinity. So if you actually want to reduce the width of this to make it look more like the designs, all you need to do is just simply give your preview a frame. And we just gave it a frame of 250 or something. You'll now see that it's starting start to look more like the actual design. So let's go back into our people view. And then this time within our for each, we're just going to pass in our person item view within this loop here. Like so. Okay, cool. And now you'll see just by looking at this, our view already looks a lot less decluttered and it's a lot more easier to read on the eyes. So I know instantly that this is the background. This is our for each with our person item view within our grid. And also this is our create button. So it's a lot more readable. So one thing to actually realize as well is that if you actually look at our mockups, you'll see that we actually have a pill on one screen and on another screen as well. Now, what we don't want to do is actually have to create another pill with the exact same styles in two different places, because if we have to change it, that means that we need to make a change in two different places. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is actually create one pill component, and we're just going to reuse that component in multiple screens. So let's go back into our designs. So this pill view within our person item view, we just go into it now. So this view here that we have, we actually don't want this to be a component view specifically within our people view. Instead, what we want to do is actually create a new folder and file within our base folder so that we can create a reusable component that's shared between different screens. So within our base, let's create a new group called views. And then within the views folder, we're now going to create a new switch to our view called pill view. And then within this pill view, what we're just going to do is just create a new property in here. So if you look at our designs, what it, what it does is it just basically displays the user ID. So let's create a property in here called ID. And it's going to be of type int. And then we should get a complaint in our Swift UI preview, which is fine. So in here, again, we'll just pass in zero like so. And then what we want to do is copy our code that we use to build our pill view within this body here. So let's go back into here and just want to cut this. And then we simply just want to paste it within here, like so. And then we want to replace this with ID. So now you can display this component. You should see it in a second when it loads in the previews. So now you can display this component here like so. And if you just want to make it look more like a component, we can change the preview layout to size that fits. So now we have our own Swift UI component where you can easily just pass in an ID and it will lay it like this, lay out like this. So now let's go back into our person item view and use this component. So just above where we lay out our first and last name, we're now going to create our pill view. And then for the ID for now, we're just going to pass in the user because we're just using this as a temporary model for this view. If you scroll out, you'll notice that when you actually build this, it looks the exact same. But the only benefit that we have now is that our view is a reusable component where we can now easily just use pill view within any of our screens. Okay, cool. So now, if you actually look at our people view, it looks a lot more cleaner, like I said before. And we also have our person item view where it's only got the context and a reusable component within it. So the rule that you kind of want to follow is that when you have views that are specific to your Swift UI view, you want to move them out into a compute property like our button. But if you have components that are like within a list, 
such as you know your person item view here it makes more sense in my opinion to actually move those views out into their own separate swift ui views and then in our final example where we had our pill view here this is a view that in our designs is used in more than one place so it actually makes sense to also extract this out into its own view so that we can reuse it in multiple places so that's everything in this video if you have any more tips and tricks that you use in terms of reusability i'd love to hear it so if you enjoyed this video i'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below also as well if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bell to get updates for whenever i release a new video that's everything from me i'll catch you on a bit deuces